right? Yeah, well, you're talking about that wacky thing that people say about cards, which is every shuffle of cards is unique almost to every other shuffled deck of cards. Okay, you. it's natural to be sceptical if I tell it's, you. I'm so sceptical. Okay, be sceptical. It's natural. Yeah. I'm telling yeah. you, be sceptical. Yeah. I'm sceptical. You're sceptical. Yeah. We can do the math. Yeah. But after properly shuffling a deck right. of cards. Right, right, right. I am telling you. Right. With absolute certainty. Yes. That that sequence of cards. Yes. Has never existed before in the history of time. Yeah. Okay. So in isn't human it history, a matter of time? Even if it's in the magnitudes of billions and billions of hands shuffled or trillions. It, I'm not saying it's impossible. Right. But I can tell you with absolute certainty this yes. is how unlikely it is that I can yes. tell you with absolute certainty that it has never happened before. That That's combination of cards has never happened before. Yeah, it doesn't because, make any sense. Because the combination of cards is called 52 factorial and what it is is the first card can be one of 52. Yep. The second so what do card I have to can type be into the calculator. I have to type okay, in fifty-two so times fifty-two. 51, 52 no, 52 times? no, no, fifty-two times yeah. fifty-one yeah. times fifty times forty-nine oh. times forty-eight. Oh. Okay, oh. now, so <laughs> <laughs> so you know when you when you play lotto, yeah. and there's maybe like I don't know, it's like I don't know forty-five numbers, and you have to get you know seven of them or something, something like that, right? Let's just say that's that's yeah. so the chance of winning lotto. That's you, you'd say that that's. Uh, unlikely, but could happen, right? Correct. The chance of winning. That's 45 times 45 times, it's like 45 times 44 times 43 times 42 times 41 times 40. That's the chance of winning lotto. Now, times it by 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, and then go back from 40, 49, uh, 39, 30, yes. 37. Th- yes. This is this is what that is what one deck of cards is. So you, if you think the chance of winning Lotto are slim, I'm yes. telling you that they are fucking excellent, excellent yep. odds, yep. fantastic yep. odds. You take that every day of the week. Yep. Then saying that the, the, the next deck, like the a deck that you've ever shuffled, has existed in in human history. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, you'd have to get a real good guesstimate on how many hands you think have been shuffled in history. And even if that number came out a stupid amount, which it would, um, we've got a problem because I started doing this on the calculator already just while you were talking. 52 times 51 times – I got up to 46. That's where I'm up to. I'm still timesing, right? But it's already an astronomical number. It's like 674 billion already. So does that mean one in 674 billion? I can tell you that 52 factorial is 8 times 10 to the power of 67. Okay. And now, what's, yeah. this is, you know, we start dealing, you complain that sometimes I bring out these numbers or space we, numbers. Space numbers. This is bigger than a space number. But, you know, when <laughs> a, an asteroid, like for example, the capsule, the Osiris Rex capsule came in at 45,000 kilometers an hour. Yeah. And you were like, that, you know, is what that the, that's a space number. Yeah. <laughs> um, eight times 10 to the power of 67 is yeah. obviously eight with um, 67 zeros on the end is basically infinity as far as we're concerned. Like that number doesn't even fit into our world. So I'm going to try and explain to you uh, how to conceptualize how big that number is. Great. So if you hide a grain of sand anywhere on all <laughs> the beaches of the world, I hide a grain of sand anywhere in the world, yep. You hide a grain of sand. Yeah. The chances of me picking it up and it being that grain of sand is 5 times 10 to the power of 21. So 5 that's with nothing. 21 zeros. Yeah, that's nothing. So I could spend – and I would spend my whole life looking for that grain of sand, right? I could, yeah. I don't, I'm not picking up one. I could just be stupid. I could even up. tell you what beach it's on. You wouldn't find it. I still wouldn't find it. <laughs> okay. Now, now think about this. There are – more atoms of carbon. Wait. There are more atoms of carbon in a gram. I'm just reading about what I've got here about my 52 factorial than grams of sand in all the world. Wait. Oh, this is still oh, spacey, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Because what what this guy, there was this YouTube video. I'll I'll put the link up in the in the um in the comments. But he said if you could label a proton or a neutron and they could hide that proton or a neutron anywhere in Earth 
And I had to select an atom and from that atom I select one of its nuclear components and, it, and the odds of that new, that atom or neutron, that proton or neutron, should I say, being the one that you selected. And remember, there is heaps of protons and neutrons. There's hundreds inside every atom and inside every atom there's – inside every like grain of sand there would be like billions of atoms, right? That yeah. is – that is, the odds of me picking out your proton or neutron from the whole earth is 3.5 times 10 to the power of 51. Right, so that's far better odds yeah. than the deck of cards. You're missing like 30 more zeros. Yeah, you're missing 18 more zeros on the end. So the so odds when you of pick you... up a deck of cards, you should respect it. Exactly. I had this whole new appreciation for a deck of cards after this. Like it was blowing my mind for quite a while. Mm. But the fact that you selecting a proton or a neutron on Earth and labeling it and me trying to find it is far more likely than the deck of cards in a predetermined order. I thought it was unbelievable because the chances of that. But have you ever seen Penn and Teller talk about this kind of stuff? Because they do card tricks, right? They can do the whole, um, please take your card out of the deck and I'm going to shuffle it now. I'm going to shuffle your shuffle the deck, right? And I'm going to get my friend to shuffle the deck and I'm going to get them to cut it. And boom, it's back in order again. They've done it. And what they've obviously done there is a magic trick, which, you know, they've, they've completely you know, done some fuckery there. That's not what we're talking about with a proper shuffle, right? But every magician starts a card trick the same way. He goes, this is how you shuffle a deck of cards, right? You split them into two. He does a casino shuffle, right? Which is the splitting in half, the push them together, does that again. And you got to do this. The pen was saying, oh yeah, you got to do that five or six times for it to be considered a shuffle. All I'm saying is if you started with that order, the regular order, and you did that standard casino shuffle, if you're like clinical with your shuffling, surely it could be the same deck again, right? Just do the math. Well, no. Well, the, 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 the thing that's different here is this person is not doing like a proper shuffle. They're, they're doing a – Oh, okay. So a there's, a, you magic they, shuffle. there's a rigging the deck in, in, in essence. Yeah. So they're not, they're not doing what's required for this, for this test. They're not shuffling the deck properly, right? Um, you know, you've seen the other shuffling, the way that people do it is they just put all the cards down on the table and they swish them around um, independently. Yes, yeah, swishy, and then, swish, and then, yes, And then yes. bring them together. Swashos, yes. I like that. I like that, right? Yeah. But the, the standard shuffle, right, works on an already used deck. But on a, on a brand new deck, surely you could get the similar outcomes. But the, the maths... Is good. The, the, maths the, maths is ma- good. The, the maths make sense. 